Hey there, thanks for stopping by and welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I'm Ms. Devi Sundar, founder of Chali Therapies and Breathe Thrive. By professional trade, I'm a respiratory physiotherapist and a psychotherapist for over two decades. In this video, I'm going to take you into a fascinating world of peak expiratory flow measurement. Before I could jump into the video, if you have not already done, please do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified on my weekly content. Without any further ado, let's jump into the video. First things first, what exactly is peak expiratory flow? Well, it's the maximum speed at which you can blow air out of your lungs. Think of it as a snapshot of your lung function. And it is a key indicator, especially for people with um, respiratory conditions like asthma and COPD. Why measure peak expiratory flow? Is that your question? Good question. The answer to that is monitoring peak expiratory flow can help you and your healthcare provider to track changes of your lung function over time. It is very important in conditions like asthma to manage the symptoms and adjust the treatment protocol according to the changes in the lung function. And uh, in, in that way, you also improve your quality of life. Now, let's get practical. How do you actually measure peak expiratory flow? It's simple. All you need is a device called a peak flow meter. It is an handheld gadget that measures your peak expiratory flow in liters per minute. Here's how you do it. Take a comfortable position in standing or sitting upright and take a deep breath in. Pull the red counter to zero. Place the mouthpiece of the peak flow meter in your mouth, making sure that you form a tight seal with your lips. Blow out as hard and as fast as you can into the meter. And this is very important part of the manual. Make sure to keep your tongue away from the mouthpiece to ensure a correct readings. Repeat the technique three times and note down the highest value displayed on the meter. That's your peak expiratory flow. Once you have measured your peak expiratory flow, what do the numbers mean? Well, um, you would have been provided with a chart by your medical healthcare professional. Um, so noting down your highest point on the chart will uh, categorize into three zones, green, yellow, and red. Green zone, your peak expiratory flow is in the normal range, indicating good lung function. Yellow zone, your peak expiratory flow is lower than usual, signaling a potential respiratory issue. It's a warning sign to take action, like using a rescue medication as prescribed. And a red zone, your peak expiratory flow is dangerously low, indicating a severe breathing problem. Seek immediate medical attention. Now, the question is, what is a normal peak flow? It depends on the age, the height, and the gender of the person. Normal peak flow varies between 450 to 550 liters per minute in adult males, and it is 320 to 470 liters per minute in females. The chart on the screen shows you how the peak flow um, measurement varies between the gender, depending on their age and the height. As you can see, the, the peak expiratory flows are higher in both genders and the age is between 35 to 40. Okay? And then you can see a gradual decline in the peak flow rate measurements. And this is due to the natural aging of the lung. As the aging progresses, there is a natural loss of volume and capacities in the lung, which is normal. But uh, in case of any respiratory chronic respiratory illness or any smoking history, this graph actually declines very quicker ra rather than a gradual decrease as seen in the chart. So uh, now let's emphasize the importance of peak expiratory flow uh, for early diagnosis of respiratory condition. Since peak expiratory flow reflects the degree of airflow obstruction, monitoring changes in the peak expiratory flow over time can help identify the potential respiratory problems before they can escalate to a severity. So early deduction allows for prompt intervention and management, reducing the risk of severe complications and improving the long-term outcomes for people. Especially the component uh, measured in the asthma is the whether there is a reversible airway obstruction uh, post uh, pre and post bronchodilator administration. Some antitips for effective peak expiratory flow monitoring. Measure your peak expiratory flow at the same time each day for consistency. 
keep a peak expiratory flow diary to track trends and share with your healthcare professional. Follow your asthma action plan and adjustment medications as needed based on your peak expiratory flow readings. Replace your peak flow meter as recommended by the manufacturer's instructions to ensure accuracy. And there you have it all, folks. Whether you're managing asthma or simply prioritizing your respiratory health, monitoring your peak expiratory flow is simple and powerful too. Remember, your lungs are precious, so take care of them. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more informative content. Have a question or a topic you'd like me to cover? Drop them in the comment box below. As usual, stay curious, stay healthy. Signing off, Devi Sundar.